it was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. I just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. I feel like we're a horse with blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. <laughs>Actually, Pastor Nicolene Paho, and I'm from Ravi Ridge, Madrid. Hey, my name is Sarama Hodielo. I'm a professional nurse, a clinical educator at Chris Honey Baraguana Hospital. I'm actually at the vaccination site as we speak, and I got vaccinated on the 18th. What makes this virus differ probably from the other viruses, the influenza virus that we've you know, come across? It's because now it has these spike proteins, okay? These are the spike proteins that are mainly attaching, you know, to the lining of the, of the, of the lungs, basically, okay? Once it attaches, then obviously our own immune system wants to respond, wants to act because they are always you know, watching what is coming into our body, okay? But by doing so, the virus is sitting there, it is attaching, adhering to the cells, okay? But the immune system from our bodies react to it and then they start causing the inflammation. The inflammation is full of water, just to simplify it. It's full of protein, it's full of fibrin, and we call it a debris. All right. And that is what causes a plugging, you know, in the lungs, making one suffers to breathe. Thank you, Dr. Bear. Um, is there anyone that can just um, briefly tell us where, however, does this um, virus come from? Coronaviruses are actually not new. Um, um We've had coronaviruses with very scientific names, but most of them causes the common colds actually. So it's not a new thing. We've had um, in 2003, something called SARS-CoV. So this one is the one that we're having currently is called a, a SARS-CoV-2 because it's the second time we're having a similar coronavirus. The one that we had in 2003 actually affected many of the Asian countries. So it wasn't a pandemic, it was more an epidemic, meaning it was restricted to one area originally in the world. We had a similar one again in 2012, I think Dr. Bayer, which was called the MERS uh, a, a SARS uh, a virus that affected the Middle Eastern countries. So what's different with this one is actually that it's, uh, it, it, it arises from animals. It's not what we normally will spread to each other and that we normally will be able to deal with uh, appropriately. Um, and like Dr. Bea said, the, 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 the challenge with this one is that one, we don't have the treatment for it. Number two, the immune response from our own bodies seem to be an overactive uh, response. It's actually quite interesting to get clinical a clinical definition, you know, and and given the fact that we're hearing all these explanations from all parts of the world in terms of what it means. But for me, um, it's a deadly thing. I can tell you that it's a home wrecker. It is the worst thing that anyone will ever, ever want to go through. At first, it was a common cold, first of all, and Three weeks down the line, I still have this flu that does not get better, you know. And um, on the third week, it's, you know, let me just go get tested. That too was a struggle to get someone to, to the clinic to do the test. Long story short, we went somewhere in Randburg, paid money, got tested. I was sick. I could not breathe. I could not walk. And and I was I was happy to see that Dr. Peya is here because you're... Um, Personal about mental health. 
the one thing that this thing has taught me is you need to have strong faith, first of all. And even that is shaking because I, I, I remember saying to God, you know what, I think I'm ready to die now, you know. And and because it hits you, Dr. Paya, psychologically. Like you are at such a depressed state that you don't even see the purpose of living for tomorrow. And and two days later, three days later, I'm looking at my sister. She's going to the same thing. She's saying goodbyes to her children and she's telling her son where the funeral don't don is is and then the night my sister died, saying 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 complain again about and they gave us some injection. And I, I I don't want to say they should not have, I don't know any better, but she came back three hours later, she was dead. And then medical response team came, they tried to resuscitate her, but I mean I could tell what I say you know, she had given up. I think you've touched on important factors and one of them being, do people know the realness of this virus given what is written on the power of social media? Mm -hmm. I mean, would we say here that um, the government has probably done enough to um, educate the masses about the virus? to make sure that your jobs become much easier to welcome people into the vaccination. There was at some stage where there was a lot of social media to say, if you go to the hospital, you will definitely die. There's been a lot of things that have been sent on WhatsApp to say the oxygen in the hospital is contaminated, the doctors and nurses are killing you and all of those things. And those things went very viral. And as an individual doctor to come out and say, guys, it's not true. So I can only do that in my circle of friends and my circle of followers on to say, imagine a whole world, 7 billion uh, people with healthcare workers, nurses, doctors, porters, security guards will conspire to kill their populations and kill themselves while they're at it. But I'm not finding that the, the, the public health specialists are coming out strongly enough to counteract those, those, uh, this misinformation and communicate better than we would. Because obviously patients think we've got a vested interest uh, in them coming to us and coming to the hospitals and all of that. Uh, so we try as much as we can to dispel it. But at the same time, we are thick, uh, in the thick of things trying to save lives. A few weeks ago, there was um, a vaccination from the, the, the Astro vaccination that was later said it's um, not valid and it's going to expire. After the research that was done by our, our researchers in South Africa, it was discovered that AstraZeneca is efficacy, is below, is 22%, which was out of question against our new variant, which is B113.5. So they opted for Johnson Johnson. So emergency authorization was applied for so that Johnson & Johnson can be used. And its efficacy against our new variant is 57%, 82% against severe disease, and 100% against death. And since we started vaccinating at Krisani Baraguana, up to today, we have vaccinated about 10,000. I understand that you probably know um, a lot of health workers that have vaccinated. And Sarah, you mentioned that you have vaccinated. We see that you're alive. I'm happy that your nose are not blocked. You don't um, seem like you're just gonna drop and die. However, um, are there any perhaps side effects? I had headache for one day, fatigue for one day, and body aches for one day, only for one day. After the next day, I was perfectly fine. And with Johnson & Johnson, after you've been vaccinated, you receive an SMS to report your side effects. And if they are severe, you'll be asked to go to the casualty. There's a doctor who's waiting there for people who have been vaccinated if they are experiencing major side effects. And we, we do have an emergency area in our vaccination site. If I've made a decision, that um, I do not want to vaccinate for many reasons. Yet I, stay, I take Imsonyana, 
I make sure that I boost my immune system with gingers and garlics, zincs, and your vitamin Cs. Would you say that um, I'm safe? And Sonyan and all that, it has not been scientifically proven, so we cannot uh, discount it nor promote it. The trouble is, yes, you as Luazi may take Mshonyane and the vitamins and all of that and not get severely ill. But if you do have an infection, you could actually still be spreading the disease and causing other people to get severely ill and eventually die. So when we get vaccinated, it's not only about you, it's about the community at large. In the first wave, we know that each person that was infected was likely spreading to two other people. Now, if we let our, com our communities not to be vaccinated, the second wave that we had, we've learned that this new variant, which is a slight change in how this virus actually attaches and gets into your cells in your body and infects them. It's gotten clever. So the more we are not vaccinated, the more we are likely to get infected and spread the disease. And in the second wave, we have learned that this new variant that is called B135.1, which was first discovered in South Africa around about uh, October last year, is more transmissible. So meaning that it would infect more people than the two that we had initially. So the longer we leave our population unvaccinated, the more chance we give this vaccine, uh, this virus, the chance to change itself and, becoming, and become cleverer to infect us because its main goal is to survive. So it's a survivor of the fittest. There was a polio vaccine in 1950s, all right? That was so helpful against clearing, eliminating the polio at the time. The, the, we were given the measles vaccine before. You know, as a child, it was, you got the measles. And then we managed at least to, to move, to remove it, the, 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 the measles away because of the vaccine. There were BCG vaccines that were given way back when you were, when you were born. You know, so it's not new to have the vaccine. At the moment, yes, we've got the pandemic that is caused by Corona. And then what this virus, I mean, the vaccine actually does, okay? You get this jab, except, okay, let's talk about Johnson & Johnson, which is an, an adenovirus, the AG26, okay? You get that injection. What that injection simply does into your body? is to waking up your immune system. It says, just wake up, be there, be the guard. So that, you know, when you are, you, you now you are faced or you get the strain, like the virus, at least there is an immune system that is ready. It has really nothing to do with the genetic alterations and all of that, like, I mean, the myths that are coming from many people. It is just to knock and say, hey, cells, wake up. So that when was is you know, um, uh, um, is in contact with someone or Uluazi has got the virus, the immune system is already there. My dream, honestly, is that I wish COVID can go away. And if really from the, the information that I've gathered today from the professionals does help, I'd like the rollout to go to the people. People mustn't go looking for vaccinations, but it's got to go to the people. My dream is, uh, as Dr. Buki Webeya, is that all South Africans, all South Africans really who wants to take the vaccine, they must receive it. You know, I think this is the way that we can eradicate it. And I want truly this coronavirus to go away. I want to live freely off mask, you know, hugging, you know, going to church, worshipping without fear. My dream is to get um, the people that would like the vaccine to get the vaccine. So I think the responsibility is on our government to speed up the processes of getting the vaccine to the people. They've got many options. My dream is to live in a society that is obviously free from the disease. My dream is to see most people be, being vaccinated, that is to reach herd immunity. At the moment, we are training community health nurses. So definitely sure vaccination sites will be set in different communities. More people will be vaccinated.